At a secret laboratory in a futuristic Turkey in 2039, President Kemal Boratov of the Wolf Squad is conversing with an AI construct of his late wife, Asena, about suffering losses in his life, including squad mates and family. He looks at his computer while an AI known as the Red Messenger communicates with him. Apparently, its existence was protected in secret between him and his wife, which led to an unfortunate incident 23 years ago. Despite his guilt and remorse, the Red Messenger assures him to calm down and trust the plan. He then unplugs out of the simulation and continues his mission to be the gatekeeper. A later in the day, on the busy highway, Kamal travels while listening to troubling news about political turmoil due to the rise of alpha artificial intelligence. He is comforted by his car's AI, Cam, who acts as a driver and a security measure for the president. Suddenly, it alerts Kamal about a disturbance caused by quantum dissonance near the bridge line prompting it to send reports to Wolf Headquarters and the National Security Agency. Meanwhile, Turkish-Polish officer Korkut Bugra Orbe is waiting impatiently in a car in the middle of traffic, refusing to be social with the AI. Suddenly, he becomes distressed upon hearing an unusual faint sound in the area. Simultaneously, Wolf Squad officer East Kara is informed by the president's stepdaughter, Tomris, about performing readings on an anomaly in the center of the surrounding area. However, she can only proceed further if the traffic loosens. She tells Kamal about this, but upon discussing the briefing, the president's convoy is attacked by a massive shockwave that sends him spiraling down a ravine. Elsewhere on the bridge, the passengers, including Corkett, exit their vehicles as they witness a strange explosion that makes some unknown futuristic armed terrorists appear. Without warning, one of them shoots a cop car, sending everyone into a panic as they flee from the scene. Meanwhile, President Kamal is badly injured while surrounded by the terrorists who attempt to shoot his armored vehicle. He orders Tomris to send two rescue teams to aid the public and leave him to protect himself. Cam initiates a defensive protocol and shoots down the terrorists, who are equipped with an invisible shield that lessens the force of projectiles. Simultaneously, Corkett protects a mother and child from the incoming fire when he spots Ice armed with a firearm, prompting him to find out who she is upon moving to her position. Later, the Turkish Air Force readies its troops when the Wolf Squad appears, led by Chef Korkut Bugra Orbe, who convinces the soldiers to let them join the convoy despite bureaucratic issues that will arise with their alliance. While in the air, he commands one of his squad mates to send a drone to the bridge. Meanwhile, Kamal is continually blasted with the terrorist weapons which are about to obliterate the vehicle. With some emergency power left, he orders Cam to give him manual control. Simultaneously, Tomris updates Baran and the squad about the situation. The chief opens up to the soldiers, revealing his former life as one of the special forces while encouraging them to face their fears to achieve victory. Not long after, Kamal has had enough and drives out of the scene, only to stop by the shot of heavy artillery from the bumper. Facing his imminent death, he orders Cam to self-destruct overriding protocols for the AI to obey. Fortunately, mechanized soldier Chaka Yazgan, so-called King of Kozan, arrives and saves the president, much to Kamal's disappointment, but Tomris insists she must keep him alive at all costs. Meanwhile, while in a standoff with terrorists, Korkut sees Ease's pendant, deducing that she is a soldier from the Wolf Squad. Shortly after the soldiers arrive, though, one of their helicopters is shot down by the terrorists. To buy the Wolf Squad some time to land Korkut and Ease, open fire to draw the armored terrorists' attention. Now safely landing on the bridge, Baron debriefs his troops and the special forces on engaging the enemies while safely evacuating civilians. With a courageous cry, they set off on their mission. Meanwhile, Chaka is fighting with a female terrorist while President Kamal arms himself with a treasured firearm engraved with the name Alam Suz. He then opens fire at the enemy soldier with Chaka's help despite not penetrating his armor. Unfortunately, the clever terrorist disables Chaka's suit with a disruptor, rendering him immobile. Just then, Tomris sends an army of mechanized drones to shoot down the terrorists until they are forced to teleport away. With the coast clear, Kamal rides a rescue aircraft to recuperate while ordering Chaka to return to headquarters. Elsewhere, Korkut and East work together to save civilians trapped in their vehicles. Baron arrives to save the pair, 
going through heavy enemy fire. He orders Corcutt to evacuate, but the young officer refuses to fulfill his duty of protecting the city. In the middle of the attack, the group discovers a mother and child, with the latter trapped inside a vehicle. Corcutt tries to unlock the door, but it does not budge. Though Baron tries to convince him to leave the scene, Kirkut is adamant about saving the child or die trying. He calls the chief by his first name, helping Baron recognize him as someone from the past. Their joyful reunion inspires them so much that they pull the door apart to rescue the girl. Unfortunately, Baron is shot in the chest and dies, much to Isi's despair, as the terrorists teleport away in a shockwave that causes the bridge to tear apart. With the girl in his arms, Corkut runs toward East, who barely grabs his arm to prevent him from falling. Chaka arrives and pulls him and the little girl to safety. The group looks in horror towards the destruction left by the attack, including the 1,200 casualties. Later at night, in the underground streets of the city, Ease brings Corkut to their secret headquarters to meet President Kamal, much to Chaka's disapproval. Upon entering, the young officer is in awe of the futuristic interior of the hidden facility. Elsewhere, Kamal is debriefing Turkish President Almayla Irk about the recent events. She expresses disappointment over the attack on the eve of a world war, feeling Kamal has not done his duties as gatekeeper of Turkey. With his secret agency now in public, she hopes he will do some damage control while also recommending he send Officer Korkut to have an audience with her soon. After the meeting, Kamal sees Kirkut, who speaks about looking forward to the moment they would see each other. Much to the surprise of everybody in the room, Kamal recognizes him and reveals the young officer is the son of a fallen squad mate, Bashit. Sometime later, Kamal instructs the team and Tomris to investigate the moments of the attack through a virtual reality simulation. He orders Kan to hack through civilians' phones to search for more information on the terrorists, despite breaking IT and privacy rights laws. After a few minutes, the team finds a visual of one of the attackers seen by a passing courier. However, the unsatisfied Kemal orders them to continue digging for personal information to pinpoint his identity. Later, he arranges a burial for their fallen comrade, Baran, witnessed by the Wolf Squad. Though East requests for him to say some parting words before leaving, he refuses, believing all he can do for Baron is to exact revenge on the perpetrators. Sometime later at night, Corkut is on board the president's plane in preparation for a press conference arranged by President Omala for his recent heroism. He must address the public about the attack, provided he does not disclose the involvement of the Wolf Squad. At the same time, a mysterious figure approaches Baran's grave and leaves a bouquet of flowers. A day passes and Kamat is informed of more details about his attacker including a curious logo of the Vitruvian man with the initials HCN on his shoulder patch. Thomas elaborates that the terrorist technology comes from Nobel Prize recipient Professor Nareddin Fourier, who they must recover after disappearing from the Max Planck Institute days ago. He asks Thomas to investigate further how the logo links to Leonardo da Vinci in ancient Rome. Shortly after, she joins a discussion with the other wolf members about the attack and whether Chaka, made the right choice to rescue the president instead of helping on the bridge. Simultaneously, Kirkut is welcomed in the police precinct as a war hero and commended for his bravery, though he still feels empty inside. Later, Tomris confides her sentiments about the operation with Cam, who is slowly adapting to human-like emotions. Elsewhere, in an undisclosed location, a mysterious arms dealer, Sage, meets with a man Ilias, while taking down all the armed mercenaries guarding him. He informs him to make his hostage install a weaponized chip inside a heavily guarded facility. Simultaneously, Kamal is traveling to the bridge while discussing with Tomris about conducting offline research about the Vitruvian Man logo at the National Library. Shortly after, he arrives at the scene and he and his team investigate the boron dust scattered near the edge of the collapsed bridge. Later, Begun informs Tomris about her origins as a Syrian baby refugee, but she dismisses it, truly accepting she is born into the Wolf Squad. The pair reach the library, and as they sift through books about the Vitruvian Man, Tomris instructs Cam to hack into the Faith Institute database, believing there is a link between the bridge collapse and Fatih Sultan the Hemet. Meanwhile, Corco enters the wolf lair with his father's pendant as the team members welcome him to their circle, except for Chaka 
who was irritated by his presence. In the middle of their talkies, escorts Korka to President Kamal's office. Along the way there, she confesses she is the daughter of the infamous former wolf officer, Taran Kara. Korka then meets Baran's successor, Tugrul Conger, who interrogates him about his reasons for joining the squad. Barbaros intervenes, reminding him his pendant is a symbol he will die with until the end, so he must choose his path wisely. He answers the young officer's queries, explaining their base is 100 meters underground in the suburbs of Bazhain. Cam adds that the squad comprises two groups, the tactical wing, Kaizi Leo and Gokio, in charge of intelligence and espionage at the Atukin. Meanwhile, Kamal meets President Omila and CIA head James T. Grauer in a video conference about the bridge attack, Though Grauer does not know why there were remnants of Boron on the crime scene, he identifies the terrorist group with the initials HCN. Ultimately, he strikes a deal with Kamal, with the stipulation China will not know about it. In exchange for the Wolf Squad's assistance in a CIA mission, the CIA will grant him access to Project Icarus, specifically the Helio Beam weapon. Later, after a brief discussion, Kamal formally welcomes Korkut to the Wolf Squad. Simultaneously, Alias and his armed guards recover a terrified Professor Fourier left in the desert and take him to a factory. The following day, Tomris and her team inform Kamal of theorizing the H in the terrorist's name may be linked to Hao Siyun. Suddenly, an alert on the terrorist's location is heard, prompting Kamal to send Kizi Liel, along with Ease, to a research and development center where the professor is held hostage. The team gets into position, with East and Korkut standing on guard with the armored vehicle. They immediately deploy elsewhere when Gokil discovers Ilyas's convoy approaching the area, with Chaka instructed to cut them off the road. Upon blocking their way in an intersection, the terrorists fire at his vehicle, prompting the group to fall back. During a shootout, Kamal soon discovers the squad is engaging with a different terrorist group tied to a private corporation. Not long after, Kezi Liel eliminates all but one of the terrorists, who confesses Aaliyah's kidnapping the professor but fails to identify the benefactor of their mission. An explosion is heard from a distance, prompting them to head to the factory. Once there, they rescue Fourier, who immediately confesses he was coerced into installing a beta AI unit inside the R211 NATO tank prototype that went berserk. Suddenly, the rogue tank opens fire at the group, leaving the factory to hunt them down. Korkut saves Ease before she gets blasted while Chaka takes the professor to safety. Gokyal elaborates that the R211 project was cancelled due to lacking lighter support, making it hard for the tank to target stationary objects. As the group tries to minimize movement, Ease and Korkut hide behind their vehicle while Cam initiates autonomous action. Chaka distracts the rogue tank long enough for Batuhan to shoot it. Korkut attaches a hook to the other car for Cam to use the line to trip the tank while Eunice destroys it with a thermobaric rocket. Kaizi Lel later celebrates their victory, with Chaka posing for a picture with the ruined machine. Feeling recuperated, all seems well until the professor reveals his ruse and admits to killing Baron on the bridge. He then declares to Kirkut and Ease he is the chosen one. Meanwhile, President Omala is grilled in front of national television by a reporter to address the terrorist attacks in Istanbul, dismissing the role of Kemal's wolf squad while assuring the public her anti-alpha artificial intelligence stance has not changed despite the need for the technology. She then proudly declares herself the entire state of Turkey. Simultaneously, Kizilil brings the fugitive professor to their custody as Kemal debriefs with the special forces commander who is standing by in case of a threat to their safety during the interrogation process. Upon closer inspection, Cam detects a synthetic object in his body, a battery lodged in the digestive system that allows him to emit electromagnetic waves similar to the terrorists that teleported away from the bridge. Kamal, along with Tomris, decides to investigate further. Inside the interrogation room, Professor Fourier, who reveals his real name as Turin, claims to know about Kamal's secrets including the Red Messenger's calculations about impending doom unknown to the Wolf Squad. He then explains the machinations of the terrorist weapons, powered by subatomic quantum energy still in development. Cam interjects with a query, annoying Turin as he does not support artificial intelligence. 
He then challenges Kamal to reveal the Baal Sultan project, which angers him enough to choke and beat up the terrorists. Kamal orders Cam to kill Turan, but Tomris gets in the way, bypassing the command to keep him alive for the moment as a prisoner. Simultaneously, President Omila discovers Turan's capture, ordering her team to take him into their custody even if Kamal will not allow it. Later, Kamal calms down as Barbaros inquires about his sudden outburst, believing his friend is still keeping secrets after 23 years. He orders his team to evacuate while keeping Turin in their lair, unwilling to give him the mitt's hands. Simultaneously, Cam collects a message from Grauer that his contact will be in Istanbul soon, but he must be protected against Chinese black ops for their deal to push through. Later, while the team plans their next move, Tomris speaks with Turan about Halcyon, which he believes Vitruvius has solved. He then blames Kamal for the rise in artificial intelligence, claiming it has caused an upcoming war between humanity and robots. Meanwhile, the rest of the Wolf Squad dress in civilian clothes and dine in a local restaurant. Corkett fixes a portrait of his late father on the wall, remembering that he once led Wolf Squad many years ago. A brief argument about seating occurs, mentioning defective members Essen and Tehran. Elsewhere, Tomris warns Kamal that President Almila will declare him a traitor if he acts out of line. He then reveals the truth about the Red Messenger, believing the Tolman Paradox allows him to receive messages from his future self, though Cam is unsure it is really from him. Tomris then deduces that all his decision-making for 23 years, including her adoption, was brought about by following the instructions of the Red Messenger. She leaves unsatisfied but gives him the advice to surrender to President Almila. Returning to the restaurant, everyone is in a good mood enjoying food and drinks. When some members ask Barbaros to talk about the old days, he then woefully narrates a happier time when he had dinner with the other founding members of Wolf Squad, namely Zinep, Tan, Marat the Bear, Asana, and Omer, who risked his life to save Tugel and the late Baran from tragedy. He then speaks proudly about Korkut's father, Bauschit, who was the chief of Wolf Squad before Kim all took over. Barbaros leaves the table upset, having recalled all those painful memories. He later speaks with Korkut, confessing his guilt over not taking him into the squad when his father passed away. He admits he is their last hope in rebuilding the wolf squad in its old ways. Later, Tomris continues her interrogation of Tehran's true motives. The ringleader asks her to join his cause, believing she blindly follows Kamal to a false ambition. Simultaneously, Kamal meets with President Almila, who is adamant in retrieving Turan into Mitz's custody. He warns her he is a dangerous man, having built a powerful futuristic explosive embedded in his body that will detonate should he be captured or coerced in revealing his plan. He convinces her to give him more time to sort out the issue by revealing he voted for her during the previous election, a fact known by her closest aide, Kaya. Suddenly, Turan activates an unknown protocol, putting Otakin in lockdown and overriding Cam's commands. He then reveals to Tomaris he is communicating with another messenger from the future, where he receiving instructions. Big Jum attempts to take back control, worrying Kamal as she is inexperienced. Unfortunately, she is attacked by a neural infection, alerting Ys and Barbaros to return to the lair. Tehran believes his cause would pave the way for an alpha intelligence to deem humanity worthy of existence. He then orders Tomris to run away as he detonates his internal battery and destroy the interrogation room. Though injured after the explosion, she reunites with Kamal, trapped inside the office, ordering her to find Cam at the Adu Camp. Once there, she resets the network, only to link into another reality where Big Hum is present, despite her physical form disconnected. She vaguely tells her about knowing the inner workings of the Baal Sultan project, but hesitates to reveal more about it, fearing it will come true. Upon telling her to wake up, Tomris opens her eyes to see an emotionless Begum standing next to her pod. She then brutally beats her to a pulp, leaving her a bloodied mess. When Tomris tries to get up, she strangles her until Ys intervenes and knocks Begum out. She breaks down in tears by what transpired as Kamal and Barbaros enter the room in shock. To be continued. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss part two.